Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, big week this week, obviously getting to start American Athletic Conference play. Uh, we're able to get the guys a day off uh, yesterday after you know a couple of days of practice after the North Florida game. Uh, SMU, terrific opponent, probably the best offensive team in the league. Uh, very balanced, and uh, you know our guys are going to have to be uh, ramped up and ready to go when we go to Dallas on Wednesday. Coach, last year at this time, you were kind of trying to explain to all your guys how much of a leap it was to play in the American from non-conference. How much does it help kind of having that familiarity? They've all been through this before. Well, they've seen it. I mean, I, I think when you tell guys, you know, what to expect, sometimes they don't necessarily believe what, um, what you're telling them because they haven't seen it. Now that they've seen it for a year, I think there is a familiarity. Uh, you know, we were going through the edit clips on SMU this morning with these guys and uh, you know, they were recalling some of the plays from last year's games and, you know, you, you're saying, you know, you don't realize how fast somebody is until you've played against them. So I do think there's much better familiarity. And I think the guys have a better feel and uh, hopefully that'll translate to, to, to playing better. Joe, um, in year three now, are, are you at the point of your program where you thought you would be or you still have way to go to, to, to get to there? Um, like everybody else, it's been a, uh, this year has been a different because you, I don't think we have truly have a feel of where we are yet because we haven't played enough games. You know, I, I, I did the, you know, we sat around before and it's no one's fault. You're just sitting there saying, you know, we probably would have played anywhere between, you know, between scrimmages and everything else. You would have played, you know, nine more games, uh, during this period. Now, uh, I do think that, you know, the schedule was set up pretty good, uh, as far as coming in, you know, to play some good competition out of conference, uh, you know, but it's, it's, uh, I, I do think with, you know, we had 11 new guys last year. I feel a lot better this year than I did at, at this point last year. So when you're building a program from the ground up, how big of an advantage is it to have a guy like Jaden to, to kind of be this, the centerpiece of that? <clears throat> oh, it's a big event. I mean, we, the good news is, I mean, I think he's going to continue to get better. Uh, I think he'll get better because we have better pieces around him. Uh, I think the other thing, he's, a, he's an unbelievable person. I mean, he's a, uh, you know, I, I think he's a, he's a character program type person that you, you want other guys around him that are very similar. Thank you very much. Welcome. Joe, when you look at SMU's offensive numbers, they're pretty off the chart. Just, just how much of a concern is that and their ability to score in bunches? Well, they're averaging 89 points a game, four guys in double figures points. Uh, great fan, a great fast break team. But the other thing that, you know, they send four to the backboard, they average 12 offensive rebounds a game. And that, that's a big factor because they put their head down, they drive it. Davis is obviously an elite level point guard. When you look at their assist turnover ratio off the chart, uh, you know, shooting 38 from three. So that they, can, they can hurt you a, a number of ways. I think one thing that they looked uh, so far in the preseason to me is they looked a lot more engaged defensively. Their, their guards are pressuring the ball better. I think they've increased their level of pressure uh, in the full court as well as in the half court. So, uh, you know, I, I, like I said before, I do believe they're the best offensive team in our league. Where would you kind of assess where Noah is right now? It seems like for a freshman, he's pretty under control as opposed to maybe some guys who come in. Do you, do you kind of get that gauge as well? He, he, uh, he, he's very under control. I mean, he, 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 he's a different deal in the fact that, he doesn't need really a screen or anything to get open. He's actually probably better when he doesn't need anything, when he doesn't have anything. You know, he can create off the dribble. He's got a great change of pace. Um, it's like everything else. He just needs to get on. Uh, you know, we need to make sure that all of our guys are on the same flight pattern. You know, we've, we've, that's one of the things with, with him and those other guys. that When the flight's going to Chicago, you can't up at, end up at Phoenix. So, you know, that's where they all got to be on the same page, making sure we're following the same plan and, um, getting there, but he's, you know, as a freshman, I think he's done really, he looked really well. It's, his stats are good, um, you know, especially shooting the ball. Like I said, I do think he's going to continue to get better and better, and he just needs to get a little bit stronger, too. Has he surprised you just how well he shot it? I mean, he wasn't, I guess that wasn't maybe the thing that everybody knew him for coming out of high school. I think Noah had an, had a tremendous advantage over a lot of other high school players because he played in, two, in three elite programs. He's played with really good guys. So a lot of times a player puts up these, you know, he averaged 25 points a game, but there was no other players. He's played at St. Benedict's, which is a great program. He's played at IMG with other great players. And then you look at his team at the Patrick School, you had five or six other Division I players. So he, he's used to sharing the ball uh, 
he was more of a facilitator because the other characters he had around him, other teammates he had around him. And I think uh, he, it's all—it's almost, I wish he was a little bit more selfish at this point. I, I think he does know how to score. He does it naturally. And I think he'll figure that out. Are you guys, uh, are y'all chartering to Dallas and kind of talk us through maybe the, the road trip schedule and you guys getting on a, fl a flight for the first time during this pandemic? Well, we're going, we're flying out of Raleigh tomorrow. So we're going to go out tomorrow. Uh, one of the, you know, we're, we're going to fly out tomorrow, we'll play Wednesday, and we won't get back to a little bit later on Thursday. Uh, so we'll have to, you know, obviously play Saturday. We'll have a little uh, planning. We'll probably have to get back here, get late, back here late in the afternoon. We'll, uh, We'll probably meet and, and walk through some stuff regarding James Madison, sort of tie up the SMU game, uh, practice Friday for, uh, for, uh, for James Madison, and a little bit of Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday for James Madison. So, uh, but we'll, we'll head out. We're going to practice here tomorrow morning and then drive over to Raleigh. And I don't know what to expect traveling in a pandemic, so we're just going to line up, put our masks on, and roll. Joe, obviously, conference play is a different animal, and you're going to be starting over fresh. But from a confidence standpoint, from your players, your fan base, and everything, what does it mean to start out five and zero the way you have? Well, I think one of the things we've talked about is, is you know, last year we didn't have a winning record out of conference, and uh, though some of it was self-inflicted, we had some injuries, we were immature, we were young. With everything going on, we we need to keep getting better, which I do feel. When you look at the just look at the sheer numbers, you know, Kent and Palm, all, uh, Net, all those deals, are, you know, we've cut it in, in, in two-thirds. You know, we've gone from the 300s in Kent Palm to 100s, you know, low 100s. So the metrics are saying we're trending the right way. Now the whole thing is how do you win some games? You know, we lost eight games by six or less points last year. How do you flip some of those games? Uh, how, how do you play better at home? How do you, you know, upset a couple of those upper-tier uh, teams? And then how do you win those games, you know, the, those 50-50 games that, we found a way to win a couple of them last year. We probably, um, you know, a different bouncer. If we, we play a little bit better, you could have flipped a couple of those. But uh, that's part of the maturing process, learning process. And uh, I, I do think we're more mature. I think we're a little bit more, uh, a lot more mature than we were a year ago. Anybody else have anything for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Yes. Thank you, Cody. Hey, right, guys. Uh, game's on ESPN Plus tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. So, if you need anything beforehand, just let me know. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys.